Also, I wonder with the military now adopting an actual submachine gun, if they're going to be doing more of issuing rear echelon troops like what would have been my job, a submachine gun. Would they even want to? Well, because the whole point of issuing someone a submachine gun is because they don't necessarily need a full-sized rifle. But every Marine's a rifleman. So th- that that's going to pertain more to the Army than the Marines. So every soldier's not a rifleman. No. Every soldier is initially trained on how to use a rifle, but, like, you get a lot of rear echelon troops that are, that, you know, aren't ever expected to see frontline combat, so they don't necessarily need a full-sized rifle. So it's, it would make sense to give them a submachine gun because it's smaller. It makes sense to give an old M16A2 because who cares? Well... No, because you want it, you still want to have them have like good equipment. So maybe, hey, they can maintain the M16A2s. It's fine. I mean, I'm, uh, logistically, yeah, it would make more sense to give them an A2 because, like, if you have a bunch of A2s sitting around that nobody's using, why wouldn't you give them one? But on the other hand, I'm going to disagree with you because now that means you have to keep more parts in the inventory, which now is a greater logistic complication. And also, if you give them an A2. You're going to have to put stuff on the M16A2 because, oh, we've got to make sure that you can mount laser sights to it. So now you're going to keep a bunch of M5 RASs in the inventory. I, I guess. Which, you know the army is, is going to be like, yeah, you have to make sure that they're, they're, they're... When the Marines first entered Iraq and Afghanistan, the detachable carry handles on their M16A4s, they considered an essential piece of equipment. So they made the Marines keep the detachable carry handle with their M16A4s, even though they gave the Marines ACOGs and different optics to put on the top of it. So there's all these pictures of Marines running around with M16A4s with a detachable carry handle bolted to the bottom of the rifle. (laughs) Yes, you end up with a bunch of images of Marines running around with M16A4s with a detachable carry handle bolted and then wired to the bottom so they don't lose it. It's it's ridiculous. And it's a detachable... It's like... It's not going to retain zero. If you zero a detachable carry handle to an M16A4 and then remove the detachable carry handle and put it somewhere else, if you try to put that back on the top and then zero it again, it's not going to be zeroed. No. No. So it just it was just really stupid. It was this massive oversight that just added a, several ounces to the weapon's weight mm-hmm. for no reason because the Marines might lose it and they might need a det- they might need a backup sighting system. <laughs> It was so stupid. It sounds stupid, yes. So, my, what I, the point I'm trying to argue is, if you give an M16A2 to rear echelon soldiers, somebody high up in the chain of command is going to go, oh, well, we still have to make sure that they're a lean, mean fighting machine and that they've got their, they've got their ACOG, which we're going to attach to the carry handle, and they've got their full rail system with their night vision sighting scope with... The vertical foregrip on there. When we went from an M16A2 to the upgraded M16A2 with a Knight's Armament M5 RAS, they made us put all of the rail panels on there. I did they made to us, send you on this tangent. They made us put a vertical foregrip on it, and we were not allowed to take it off. Uh-huh. Which it says in the manual for that, that the vertical foregrip and rail panels are to be added onto the weapon at the end user's discretion. Yeah. The individual soldier is supposed to go, yes, I want this verti- I want this broom handle vertical grip on it. Yes, I want these rail panels. No, I don't want these rail panels. But they made us put all of that shit on there. So that was an extra Oh man, that was an extra pound that I had to add to my rifle for literally no reason. Mm-hmm. Because somebody thought it was a good idea. Yep. It was also funny. When they issued us our M16A2s, and then they issued us the M68 CCO, or Close Quarter Optic. When they issued us that, basically everybody was complaining about getting a red dot optic. Nobody was happy about it. Why? Because we'd all been trained on iron sights. Oh, okay. So we were all like, this is fucking stupid. What is this stupid Call of Duty future bullshit? Did you get used to it, though? Eventually, yeah, you got used to it. But now, it's like, if you don't have a, a red dot optic on your rifle, you're like a fucking caveman. So what you're saying is they were right. You were just hesitant to adapt change. Yes, but that's that's not that the the point I'm trying to argue 
is that yes, you could give M16 A2s to rear echelon troops, but somebody in the chain of command is going to go, well, I want all this extra bullshit on there because it looked cool and army future. Okay. So I fully embrace the military being like, yeah, we're going to adopt the submachine gun. And I really hope that what they're doing is issuing the submachine guns to rear echelon troops that don't necessarily need a full-sized rifle. Okay. I think that would be a, a, a very good addition. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but the M16 that you had, you had an A2 when you were in service, correct? Yes. At the very tail end of service, you were issued the A4. Yeah. Yeah. When you were issued the A2, was it just the plastic handguards? Uh, yes. Okay. And then the A4 actually had Picatinny rails. Yes. See, when I was issued the M16 A2, I was in, I was in at this weird time where they issued us the M16 A2. So for the longest time, yeah, I just had the plastic handguards one. Mm -hmm. And then they issued us... The new upgrade program for the... I forget what the specific upgrade was. But it was basically an M16A2 with the Knight's Armament M5 RAS. And then a gooseneck mount with an optic stuck on it. Mm -hmm. So it, our, our M16A2s went from being like a 7-pound rifle to like a 9.5-pound rifle. Yeah, it sounds really annoying. For basically very little benefit. And then when I came up with the bright idea of... The rail system has a bolting system to it. So, so that you can put optics on the rail system... And have them retain zero. So why don't I just take the the M68 CCO off of this stupid gooseneck mount and just mount it to the rail system? No, you have to keep the gooseneck mount. Why? The gooseneck mount is setting it up so it's a lower third co-witness. But now I it, it restricts the diameter of the carry. I, I oh man, it restricts the diameter of the carry handle. So now I basically have a little tiny tunnel I have to look through to use the iron sights. And then it's, it's just this big block that's blocking out the bottom of my, of my M68. It was, yeah, it, the whole thing was just kind of a weird clusterfuck. Sounds like it.